Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Comics Rant. I'm your host, Arvin Bautista. I'm trying to be a little bit more regular with my uh, posts on videos. Let's see how that works out. It is still raining a lot here by my house. I guess California does need some rain, but this is a lot of rain. <laughs> this is atmospheric rivers worth of rain. So I actually went back to the comic book store as soon as I could and picked up my pull list stuff this time around. And it might seem like it was pretty quick, but it wasn't. <laughs> so I like you can see I have a bunch of human targets here. So this is at least three <laughs> months worth of me not going to the comic book store. So maybe a somewhat quarterly visit to the comic book store isn't too bad, but I'm sure that my local comic book shop would rather I was there a lot more frequent. Um, this is the stuff from my pull list. I think what's interesting is I will also show you guys what I just bought on a whim when I went to the comic book store. In any case, this is Human Target by Tom King and Greg Smallwood. I got three issues of that. I got three issues of more Tom King stuff called Danger Street, which uh, from the last episode, if you guys had seen it, was Tom King doing takes on these really obscure characters from DC's past. You got Lady Cop, you got like the dingbats of danger street you got atlas starman which i think is great and i think it works for tom king a lot uh tom king's books aren't like these action-packed crazy comics right like when you look through them this is just beautiful work from greg smallwood here it's very it's got that very uh, il uh illustration illustrator uh from the pulp noir kind of uh, paperback books and you know, the, what's great is he just kind of does it on the covers which is great right like this one ice never looks so good <laughs> nort never looks so good and um it's inside it's great looks really good he seems to be able to produce this on a regular and uh predictable basis which is which is great for monthly comics too it's a very good story. I think it's one of his better, um, one of his better ones. From if you're a Tom King fan, uh, and it looks fantastic. He's paired up with the perfect person here, and it's great. He uses so Human Target again is a character that we haven't heard from in a long while. I loved the Peter Milligan run a while back. I thought it was brilliant. The TV show <laughs> did not have anything to do with the comics. This is the last issue. But uh, I, re I loved the concept of it, the characters. And what he's done here is he's actually mashed th uh, the case that the human target is working. The case revolves around the Justice League that existed in the 90s. So it's the Adam Hughes, um, J.M. Demetais run, uh, McGuire, right? Kevin McGuire. Kevin McGuire? Yeah. Uh, on art and they're and they're great we we get to catch up to them we don't really see them anymore in continuity so much because you know you got superman batman wonder woman running the justice league now so it, it is nice you don't have to know them so it still works and it's tom king so he spins these characters into his own purposes anyway that that i'm excited to finish this up Oh yes, this episode's all about me not reading any of these things yet. <laughs> it's just stuff from my pull list. So I'm excited to read this and end it. It's it's um, really great. One of the few monthly books that I pick up. It's a limited series. Here's another limited series. Uh, but he's paired up. Tom King is paired up with uh, what's jo Jorge Fornes? Fornes? Dave Stewart on colors. It's great. The approach here, you know, again, it's not like this crazy action-packed style story, but Tom King is not that kind of writer anyway. He can pair up with some pretty good action-packed people, but I think his best stuff is really when he does drama. 
and drama and kind of this uh, interesting HBO take on heroes and why I eat up his stuff. Uh, so I got three issues of that. All right, here we go. We got Dark Side sitting around the living room, which is always fun. And I think uh, Tom King pulls on uh, a lot of the old history of these characters and spins it to his own use. Oh, the source wall is here. Yes. <laughs> Very Kirby. This was a good series, too. This, sorry, this is the ad. But uh, Cliff Chang on Catwoman Lonely City. It's like Catwoman Dark Knight, basically. Uh, Lady Cop. <laughs> this is the cover, <laughs> which is great. Manhunter. Again, all these characters we haven't really heard from. And he's kind of putting them together into his story. Um, and I always like the stuff that he comes up with. Uh, whether it's not his best work or, you know, I've read like a range of his stuff and it's always interesting. He always brings up some good stuff. So I like Tom King's stuff. All right. Then I got Superman Space Age issue three. The last one of the series uh, looks rather bleak <laughs> and awesome. Mike, Al the Allritz still kicking butt. <laughs> you got old school Lex here. Mind you, I haven't read any of these. <laughs> I'm just flipping through them and showing you some pages here. This is how I do my comic book shopping, right? It's mainly a visual thing for me. And artists that I like, and artists that I follow, characters that I like. Look at this Batman. This Batman's pretty sick. Cool looking Batman. <laughs> Riddler goons. I'm not even sure what's going to happen in this issue. But I am excited to finish this too. Always cool to see old school uh, Jor-El. The story is is very modern though, I have to say. Ooh, spoilers for me. Oh my gosh, that looks awesome. More spoilers, so great. Um, I don't mind seeing these things. I hope you don't either. <laughs> if you do, you better not watch this episode. Um, I have, because I have not read any of these. Uh, husking corn, pocket husking, husking corn, always awesome. This pie, I like the the way that Mark Russell approaches this pocket and Ma Kent and Superman's relationship with them. It's crazy brainiacs. We're going multiverse action here, and we're in good hands with Mike Allred and um, Mark Russell. Sorry, I'm blanking out here. My coffee isn't quite kicking in. Anyway, so these are the books that were in my pull list. I, I, I picked them up and very happy, paid for them. But I think what's interesting is the stuff I pick up uh, that I just see. So, well, this is a combo, right? Okay, so let's switch this out, switch it out. And here are the books that I just picked up on a whim. This is Scott Snyder and Francis Manipal's Clear. I believe this was on digitally i think it was on comiXology and he has ties with i think he's scott snyder has a bunch of books coming out for that are comiXology originals and then he brings it over and prints it out through dark horse i'm i think comiXology is going through a lot of changes and there are a bunch of layoffs uh, it's very unfortunate i used to love going to comiXology and getting all my stuff that way um, but it just hasn't um, been maintained once they got bought by Amazon uh, unfortunately hard to find things that I like uh, my collection's still there but in any case uh, I, I saw it I know Scott Snyder from his Batman work um, and all his other horror stuff which I think I like his indie stuff a lot more than his mainstream Batman stuff which was awesome with Capullo Francis Manipal came on the scene or well, he got on my radar when I saw him drawing Flash on the new 52, and that was just excellent stuff. Crazy looking cool stuff. Now, this is like, you know, it's made to be eye catching. That's just Manipal's style, right? It's very eye catching, colorful, dynamic, cool, right? So, you know, I see this on the stands. Heck yeah, I'm going to pick it up. It's great. It seems like it's double sized. It's five bucks so yeah, it kind of makes you think a little bit but 
a lot more a bigger page count uh, there's I flipped through this earlier and there's like this this the artistic style changes I'm not sure if it's some multiverse thing again seems to be the the trend here like you know we got like a different version genre of whatever is going on here cartoon cactus <laughs> what's going on but it looks awesome uh, seems to be the thing that everybody is getting into uh, with Echo Lands that I had last uh, last episode with J. H. Williams the third right uh, switching styles in the middle of the story and I haven't ooh hey noir lady lady noir style cyberpunky uh, I haven't read it so I have no idea what it is I'm excited that it looks cool uh, love the colors just these kind of crazier colors very eye-catching eye looks like there's a side story in the back here let's not go all the way to the end so I don't spoil it for myself clear number one looks awesome saw it in the stands sold here's another one by um, that also grabbed me okay good book one I thought was book two <laughs> that also grabbed me it's by Lee Barameo he has this like super gritty hyper realistic style ultra detailed stuff that I I love to look at uh, it's not for everybody he was doing a bunch of covers for Batman and where did I see his stuff first I mean I have his black label stuff but I knew his stuff before that Superman I think he did some Superman stuff and like for Wednesday comics he did um, yeah, he did this the Batman one in that one, I think. Or was it Batman Superman? But he's been he's been around forever drawing, you know, just doing this kind of style and looks like he's with Boom now. I think he still has an image book. I could be wrong. He has all sorts of things going on. But holy cow, look at that face. What just happened? So I took a photo. <laughs> and it's great. Um you know, the stuff I'm working on now has this kind of uh, high contrasty approach and you can kind of see why I kind of gravitate to these things well maybe not the gimp in the mask but it just it's striking uh, this is how I find my comics stuff looks good yeah I'm gonna pick it up I'm gonna try you out uh, the story will of course push it through but the main thing about comics for me is the way they look right I will read terrible looking comics too by the way <laughs> don't make any mistake about it ah here we go so here's another one where the style completely changes again <laughs> there must be a theme on the things I'm picking up now you know we get we get this the black and white gray looking thing now it's a little bit more graphic still his style a little bit more graphic though all right looks great who's is he coloring himself he is very nice very nice <laughs> I guess who else could color his craziness right but it looks really good I kind of like that this graphic style that he's leaning into here oh yeah this looks all cyberpunky too by the way yes cyberpunk I watched cyberpunk edge runners on Netflix and it, it was awesome maybe this is just the the aesthetic I'm totally craving sci-fi has always been the genre that I've loved since a kid since I was a kid so I guess it makes oh see it's like kind of painted here what is going on with these books yes please I gotta read these so that's Matt Tomlin does the story and Lee Bermeo does the art uh, it's the first issue I should probably put this on my pull list <laughs> and you know this kind of quality it's not gonna it's not gonna be like a monthly book right at least I don't think so <laughs> yeah good stuff big fan of Lee Bermeo stuff definitely not for everybody uh, but it's always just so striking I have to pick it up I have to flip through it at the very least if I don't buy it the last one on my purchase here I have seen this before this is the forest by Thomas Ott so the comic book pages that I'm doing now that you probably see in the next segment um, 
lean a lot into this kind of uh, aesthetic. It, he's doing scratchboard. It's not what I'm doing at all. So it's the opposite. So last episode, I said I'm more comfortable adding black uh, lines onto white uh, page to the white page. This version, the way Thomas Ott does this is totally different. It's the opposite. So he starts off with black and he scratches out the whites. So, you know, it's beautiful. This is some beautiful stuff for it. So I forget when I saw this a few months back, I was maybe looking at like some horror comics because I was getting so into them uh, with Junji Ito's, Ito's stuff, which I think I have an episode of before and uh, all these different uh, approaches to it. And, you know, I love the intricacy of Junji Ito's stuff. So it kind of pushed me to do that with my work currently, right? And then I saw Thomas Ott and I was like, oh, I want to do that. <laughs> of course, Thomas Ott is awesome. You can't just go, I want to do that and make it happen. Um, but this is one of the books that I saw. I've seen this in the comic book store before the forest, but I just never bought it. This is, how much is this going for? Sixteen ninety nine. So I think he has bigger, bigger bodies of work. This is like the, the shorter one, but here, I'll just flip through it. I'll shut up and I'll just flip through it. Or I'll, I'll talk through it and <laughs> flip through it. I love this uh, highlight uh, color of yellow. Uh, it's, it's black and white, right? This is just, it's on this really nice matte paper. So it's glaring a little bit here, but you know, it's not glossy, which is perfect for this. It's a, uh, it's a silent story, which I think why I gravitated towards it as well. I just love it. I have like all these comics that don't have words in them and I just love them. I find them just very gripping. Well, you know, this is kind of scary looking, so yeah, that's going to grip you for sure. And I haven't got to the scary parts yet. <laughs> this um, light technique that he does here is just beautiful. Look at that. Good stuff. Good stuff. So I think I saw his work that maybe had some frames of this, and it kind of jazzed me up to, to take my short story on my old short stories. Oh, there's this little like demon <laughs> or at see my imagination is going wild, but it's just like a little silhouette with two eyes, right? <laughs> it's not a demon. But it's his it's his inner demons maybe. Ah yes. I totally liked how I flipped that around of this kid walking through this forest. You know, you get like some you still some scary <laughs> hair monster <laughs> going around here. <laughs> Uh, it it all isn't just scary naked lady. It all isn't just scary pictures of this boy walking around. There is a, an actual point to this story, and I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. It's oh, it's only 28 pages, so. Uh, but just beautiful work. Like oh my gosh, look at that guy's. Oh my gosh, <laughs> look at that guy's uh, shirt right just looks fantastic this old man his silhouette nicely composed against those trees just let it disappear here but then you got his face the most lit really most distinguishable i guess the most lit is the grass but it's a human face so my eyeball is going to go there i mean it feels good this paper is great it's on hard it's hard bound Look at that grass. <laughs> Worth it for me, right? Like some people will be like, Arvin, you just read it in two minutes, in one minute. You paid $17 for it. But I can just flip through this over and over and over and just get inspired, right? Oop, I'm almost at the end. I'm not gonna flip to the end of this. But just beautiful stuff, really great. Um, so that was my impulse buy at the comic book store. I, I kind of was looking for it already, so it was not hard for me to decide to get it. But it is interesting, the books that I will decide to pick up, especially after, what, three months of not seeing anything at the comic book store. And I think that drives a few of the sales, but 
I'm not really a reliable customer. <laughs> Sad to say, Library Mario stuff. And I think, extra sad, is these are the last of my pull lists, right? This is the last, book three is where it ends, Superman Space Age, Space Age, I think. Oh, wait, this is still going. Book 12 is the last of Human Target, right? And then I think Danger Street is also until 12, and this is only book four. So this is still the, maybe this is the only thing on my pull list right now, Danger Street. And then that's it. I'm, so I, I'm even less of a reason for me to be regular at the comic book store. I'm going to try to keep going. It is an expensive habit, but the, I mean, these books that I just picked up are so worth it. These are going to stay on my bookshelf. They're not going to go into some bin and I'm just going to get rid of them. I get a little bit more picky, but the things I pick... I will definitely keep. I used to just consume this stuff. Okay, that's it for the comic book portion. I might come back to some of these books later on in the episode, but it is nice to have <laughs> I went back to the comic book store after three months and picked up some more things. Uh, <laughs> comic book shop owner is probably thinking the opposite. In any case, I will see you guys on the next half where of this episode where... I will take my inspirations and apply it to the comic book page. See you guys then. All right. So in this episode, I will talk about this panel that I did for this page. I think it would be page two. two? Yeah. So the first one from the last episode was the first page. And I believe this was going to be page two. <laughs> so you can see I'm laying out some of this stuff so I can kind of plan ahead. And this will be panel four of page two. I started out, I usually like to start out with pages that exist that I already drew. And, oh, see, for this one, I did the same thing I did for the first page where I take a Google Maps image. I kind of manipulate it a little bit and then I just ink over it. I will zoom into this one so we can kind of see the process of this a little bit better. But this is The Shack of Darkness. So The Shack of Darkness is my short story revamp, I guess, of a homework project that I did for comic book class at RISD, the Rhode Island School of Design, many moons ago. Um, so it, it's kind of a nostalgia project and also kind of something that I'm just getting super into. I, I liked the stories that I told back then and it was it was kind of nice to revisit it uh, now that I can add a little bit more of my spin now. Uh, so I'm it's like I'm inking over my younger self which is kind of a trip. Trip. I don't think anybody uses that word anymore <laughs> but I am old. Um, so in this case I made like this super rainy setting uh, I just I have not gotten it out of my system to draw rain. It's just so much fun to try to figure out. Um, I think I've said it in my previous episodes and on my social media feeds, but I love Will Eisner's stuff and John Romita Jr. when they depict rain, and it's just so fun to try to try to do. Um, this building is my apartment complex back in college on my sophomore year and I believe there's three units in this so four of these windows each um, is a unit and I was on the upper second to the left upper window I don't know how to describe it but it's it's uh it was a great place to be in <laughs> Very bachelor patty. Uh, I was with two other guys that I met um, freshman year, and we lived on the same floor, Homer in Homer Hall, in the student um, uh, student dorms. It was a co-ed floor, which was cool for me because I was a loser <laughs> didn't really you know i didn't really know how to talk to girls and all that so it was kind of neat 
Um, I think everybody on that floor is super cool. Uh, I've kept in touch with some of them too. We've all kind of moved in different places. I'm not even sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any of those people in California. Uh, one is uh, somewhere like in Arizona or is it Aspen? <laughs> I can't remember. One is in Korea. It's all over the place. Um, anyway, on sophomore year, I moved with these two guys, Kyung and Koske both of which were architecture majors and which is funny because this building seemed like it was sinking into the ground um <laughs> it was it did not look like this at all it was not green it was not straight it was uh, the crooked house uh, people would know it as the as the crooked house and they would know that that's what i meant when i told them that's where i lived it was behind this pizza joint uh that sold two slices of pizza and a can of coke for three dollars so that was excellent and uh, the funny part is I always wondered why I had so many pimples back in college I thought it was some kind of crazy genetic disposition it, maybe it was but I'm pretty sure eating two slices of pizza and a coke every dinner <laughs> almost every day didn't help <laughs> and, and in any case so the fun part about this was trying, I found a picture, a very old picture of, I guess I took it while I was moving out my portfolio pieces. And it's kind of like this tiny sliver, but it was perfect because it kind of showed how crooked and how broken this, like this room right, uh, this roof right here, you can kind of see, was, and, uh, and how weird, like the, there was like this kind of upper balcony that is where you would enter the 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 apartments uh, downstairs would be uh, I think like a um, where you would wash your clothes it's weird it's been so long I I, I was just talking to a friend of mine uh, I was texting her and I, I asked her like do you remember any of the the usual things you did like the bathroom that you took a shower in 20 years ago, 20, 20 some odd years ago. And I cannot for the life of me remember what the bathroom of this place looked like. And I was, you know, I'm pretty sure I took a shower every day. I could be wrong. But the kitchen, I can't remember. But there are a lot of memories with it. I just remember the fun stuff and not so much the mundane stuff. But it's the mundane stuff that I wanted to kind of lean into to remember and I think that's what this project is trying to jog my memory or record it so you know the thing is I don't have a picture of this place not really not my room nothing uh, just the outs that one picture of the outside facade of this thing that could show you how crooked it was so I'm kind of trying to make my own pictures <laughs> with of that time with this comic book I know it's kind of weird but super fun uh, so they fixed this up. This it was not green. It was like this weird, very, um, really cruddy-looking brown uh, linoleum kitchen floors. Uh, our living room was sloped, so if you put a basketball on one side, it would roll to the other, but then it would roll back and forth and back and forth. It was just not a good place. Um, but a lot of fun. So all a lot of fun and a lot of my darkness phobias came from it, which is why it spawned this this uh, story. <laughs> but um, this uh, drawing, I wanted to figure out how to make it creepy. I guess it, w it wasn't much of a stretch, but also still really how it was. Um, it's kind of like the haunted house shot, right? This is where it comes in. And I had to figure out, uh, in the last page, I had to figure out how water would hit the ground and how I would draw that. For this one, I kind of had, I was a little scared about trying to depict how water would travel from this, the roof down to the, 
side, um, the facade, down the little awning, and down to this like monster crazy bush thing that's uh, on the bottom middle of this drawing that you can kind of see. I almost totally forgot about that bush. I swear I had to like really scratch my head a few times and try to convince myself yes there was this thing there and it, you should draw it right because uh, I was trying to draw it with I did have the reference of what it looks like now but I kind of tried to also so on this little porch thing on the top the second floor of this building that's actually where you would go up to enter our apartment or all the apartments really and this uh, railing that was on that on that um, upper elevated uh, porch area was kind of this weird pieced together <laughs> bunch of uh, there was I think there was a, like a ladder when I looked at to kind of like pose as the railing and someone tied it together it was just very bad. Uh, for most part, I think it was us until like I think these juniors lived uh, next to us, and I think they were architecture majors too, maybe industrial design. I was in illustration, so I was kind of the odd man out. I figured these these two architecture students that I was being housemates with would know you know it would be okay to live in this shack because it was safe enough. But then a friend of mine, I posted this on Facebook, this picture, and she did remind me like, oh, you know what? They probably thought it was okay because they weren't there most of the time. It was usually just me. Uh, architecture just seemed like a terrible major. <laughs> they were never home. Uh, they, were, they would always be in the studio. Maybe it was me. I don't know. But they would always be in the studio doing their homework projects. They would have these like because they can't haul over these diagrams and models that they would cut up and make like buildings out of you know this, this is like old school they did learn like CAD to do their stuff but nothing was really digital none of this they would actually have to make physical models of some of these things kind of neat but you know I don't, I'm not even sure people do that anymore <laughs> nowadays maybe just to show off but for actual plans that you would work off of it would it's it has to be digital nowadays, right? Anyway, I, I digressed about this monster uh, shrubbery that's in front of the house. Uh, I think that was probably the most fun of this panel that I drew because it it was not grass on the ground. It was kind of this shape. And then the water would come from the sky to the roof to the awning, uh, the patio, and then down to the shrub. And I was able to, the way I rendered the wood of the house is still kind of like my usual hatching techniques with maybe uh, breaking it up so it bands into stripes. So it looks like, mm, I don't know how to describe it, but it looks like if you played those old uh, video games back in the day and they would do like waterfalls and they would really just be bands of color that would uh, cycle and flow through. That's kind of the same idea I was trying to pull off with the with the house. So that came along a little bit easier than I thought. Uh, that kind of like showing that kind of rain. And then when it came down to the killer the killer monster shrub down there, the bush of death that sounds wrong. <laughs> it, would, um, it was kind of really fun. It made it look like this creepy webby um, thing so it just added to the to the creep factor really of this uh, of this drawing of I'm trying to hit this atmosphere and then right now I'm, I'm doing the same techniques where I'm putting these circle circular quote unquote ripples in the grass I thought it just uh, I just kept it through it um, I just like the texture that it made so I put it in there and I kind of like the water striping that I did on my last panel mm, excuse me and uh, so I kinda brought that in I don't know I don't I didn't really keep uh, as much of it 
uh, in, in the final rendering, but it's there. Uh, so you can kind of see a little bit of that texture moving through uh, the drawing. And then I kind of like playing... Like usually in these drawings, there there are parts of the drawing that you mentally think you're going to do great in, so you do that first, right? Or you're excited about, so you do that first. So for this one, it was the, the shack itself, and I thought it would be, uh, you know, some, sometimes to get yourself going and drawing, like if you're not feeling it, you go for the easy, the easy one first, right? You go for the easiest one that you draw, then you kind of warm up and you get into it. And uh, that was the, the house here um, for this panel, but the one I didn't want to draw was the ground. <laughs> I didn't really know how to resolve it. I, like in my memory, I know there's many things that are around this. There is an area that's blank. Right? There's a parking lot in front of this house. There's a building to the left. There's another building behind that one, the pizza place that is in my head. So there's all these memories and things that I, I was kind of feeling like I should depict it in here. But as I'm drawing, I'm realizing, okay, I'm still telling the story. What do I really need in this panel? And do I really need... The pizza place that's in front I mean that is great to have um, because of my memories but it, it's not necessary so that's on this ground level and once I started um, playing with the perspective right like how close are we to the foreground how far are we from this house and once I put down the raindrops on that ground level that's when I started getting into like mentally interested in depicting the ground <laughs> and I think it's more like what do I draw here I don't know right it's a little bit of space but still there in the composition I still have to figure it out a lot of my drawings I'm just kind of off the cuff trying to figure it out there's a rough like you see in the beginning of what I think it would be and then but once I'm starting to draw something especially if I'm spending more time with it uh, there's a lot of things that change and usually and yeah it is usually for the better um, there are sketches that I ha I'll have that I'll see and I'm like oh I kinda like that sketch but I'm usually not so disappointed in the final <laughs> in the final drawing to just wish like oh I wish I just always drew sketchy um, there are times of course but more like I always wish I drew looser than sketchy. Um, yeah, so uh, if you see where I'm filling in the hatching right now, it's on the bottom right of this panel. Um, if you look over a little bit, you'll see like a staircase uh, next to it. So that was interesting for me to try to figure out as well. I would, I drew that in white first and then I just kind of left it. And I, and I just started doing this hatching that's behind it, and then it just kind of started popping out. And, you know, for a little bit, I did think, what if I just left it in this Frank Miller Sin City <laughs> style white uh, over black, right? Like, I'm trying to... But I was like, nah, that's not how it is. And you can see, I'm like filling it in. <laughs> that's not how it is. This won't work. It's kind of neat to see, but that's not where this drawing is going um, and as I'm filling it in it's just kind of fun uh, I get excited like especially at this point of the drawing where you see it like I start getting excited and thinking oh this is almost done and then I start looking back in other parts of the drawing where it's like oh, I need to darken this I need to add this or it doesn't look rainy enough right there's not enough drops going on or here I'm starting to add layers on top like I did with that first drawing or first uh, page uh, I kinda get ahead of myself but it's because I'm just excited right there's all these things I want to try and experiment like oh what if it hit the side of the building and you see the drops on the side and so on so on does that work and sometimes after I've done that and I like it give me a couple hours I'll look at it and I'll be like what was I thinking that that was not right so 
layers save me a lot. Um, strangely, I think they help me loosen up and not worry about the drawing so much. So I don't become so precious about it. And I have noticed the more of these pages that I'm drawing, the more I'm hatching these things, um, I want, I add a layer to try to darken up things. And I don't think I've ever regretted doing that. Um, <laughs> maybe that's just me. But I've ever, I, I don't think I've ever regretted adding more uh, hatch lines to darken something up or to make it gray. Um, the only time I'll be like, oops, maybe I shouldn't have done that is because that rendering style might all of a sudden look kind of different from how I've been drawing the other pages. Um, I remember there's a, the first page that I worked in worked on. It, wa it was not the first page uh, or page one. It was not page one. It was like page five or something like that. I'll, I'll try to cover it in one of these episodes. But it looks a little bit more plain now than a lot of the panels I've been drawing. Um, so I don't know if that's a big deal. Oh, and this is the final uh, panel, all finished up. Uh, I kind of make it a little bit more dark on the right side. Um, and we get like close-ups of this thing. Uh, so it's a little bit better to see what I've been doing. Um, it's just fun, <laughs> guys. I know I've repeated this many times, but it's just fun to have fun drawing. I'm not really caring if anybody <laughs> likes it or not. And it's just something, it's a project that I'm still super excited about. Um, it takes a lot of time, but it's worth it, I feel. Worth it for me. Uh, making, I'm literally drawing my memories uh, in more ways than one with this uh, little project. And um, that's it for this episode. Um, a few more images here, and this last one, or second to last one, is the full page. I still have four panels to go, but that should be doable. More scenes of a fly through over this area. And this is our uh, final panel once more. Thanks for joining me in this episode of Comics Rant, and I will see you guys next time.